Is that what I think it is? Um, what do you think it is? Is that Paul Walker's car? We won't be going long. So I'm just saying bye to the Shelby, and we're gonna start this vlog off now. So we've got a long road trip ahead of us, don't we, hon? Yeah. What are you doing, babe? I was looking for a cereal. She's gonna be doing the driving. Little man got his chucks. I got my chucks. The reason why she's gonna be doing the driving today is because I'm gonna be doing some editing while we drive. Show Logan's out. And Logan's got a skeleton outfit on today. Say hi to the vlog, buddy. Hi. Bye bye. You wanna tell everybody where we're going? Do you? Huh? Philly? To Philly. We're going to Philly, guys. So that's where we're heading now. I see the light inside you, brighter than the skies. Gold 4.0. I don't know if you watch the videos or not, but I think he does. Oh yeah. That was actually the worst of the car right there, wasn't it? Yeah, that's what Laura wants. She wants a Volkswagen bus. And it has all like the little hippies inside. She's, she's secretly a hippie, aren't you? You're a hippie. One of the biggest things I'm like super excited for is the Philly cheese that's I would never have to look like. Rob, his family has a car museum out here, so we're gonna go check that out. You ready to go inside? You ready to go inside and see all the cars, buddy? Yeah. All right, let's go. It's Rob. What's going on? And then you want to introduce yourself. You've got a YouTube channel also, right? Yeah, my name's Arnold Leon. Um, me and Rob actually have it together. It is ARL Motorsports. Just check it out, see if you like it. Check them out, guys. Anthony, what's, what's going on? What's going, what's on, going on, man? Good to see you. What's going on? Yeah. We've been planning this for what, six months? Six months. Six months to come out here, check out his place. So it's a yeah. dealership too. You want to tell them? Hi about? everybody, Rob Leipziger here, LRA Auto Museum and Sales. It was actually started by my father. This is my father's company. We are a newer used car dealership with newer low mileage cars. And we also, as JD's gonna allude to, we sell classic cars ranging from the 40s up till the 80s of with American Muscles, Cruisers, we do a little bit of everything. So we're not really drawn to just one specific thing, which is what I think our best strong point is here. Got a crazy collection of cars in here, some like super rare stuff like that Yanko Camaro over there that I spotted. And then this is awesome too, Every boss. Yes, and I love the color. It's not white, it's like a cream. It's actually the original color is called Wimbledon White from the factory. Yeah. All of these cars in the showroom are my father's. They're not mine, they're not anybody else's. We own a few different businesses that my father started. This past year was 35 years. We started a company called Rob's Automotive Collision and Rob's Towing. Look at this thing. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, this is a 2012 Copo Camaro. Ironically, there's actually three Copos in this room, but this is the newest. Back in 2012, as a homage to the 69 Copo Camaro and Copo Chevelle, they brought back a run of Copo Camaros as street drag cars. They started doing this in 2012, and they do it every year now. They make 69 of them per year in a multitude of different colors and with three different motor options. This one in particular is a, the biggest motor option you can have. It is a 427 cubic inch motor, naturally aspirated. This one actually doesn't have a mile on it. And, and if you look on the back, on the radials, on the tires, the drag slicks, they still have the original stickers on the heat. Honestly, this is my favorite. This is your favorite? Yeah, by far. What's great about these cars from back in the day is they mm -hmm. all have their own specific story. Yeah. This car is really, really cool to me because like I said, I grew up watching the Fast and Furious movies. Right. And I was always a muscle head. My, I mean, I always was a Corvette guy, a Camaro guy. That's why I drive a newer Camaro now. Back at the end of the Too Fast, Too Furious movie, I saw the, I saw the blue Yanko Camaro that Paul Walker drove and I was like, that is badass. Before I knew it five, six years later, whenever we ended up getting this, it just really drew me back to that. This is a numbers matching 427, four speed Yanko Camaro. And um, Yanko, the name is um, originated by Don Yanko, mm -hmm. who built these cars out of Cannonsburg, PA. And that's another cool part of me. With these, with all of the Yanko Camaros, they were built locally, and by locally, at least in the state of Pennsylvania. Yeah, and I, this car is just, it's sleek. And what I love about the old muscle cars in general is they all had character. They weren't 
cookie cardboard cutout cards. Yeah. Like a lot of the newer ones are. They, they all kind of look alike. Yeah, they do. Each These things have character, they have style, which yeah. I think a lot of the newer cars lack in my opinion. See this car, which, which is really cool about this one, this is one of only a couple hundred big block 69 Camaro Pace cars. Mm -hmm. They did not make many at all. And out of all of the cars in here that I've driven myself, this is the best driving car in your hands down. Oh wow. It might not be the fastest. It's still a big block, 350 horse car. But this car, the clutch is the smoothest. It moves the best. And I'm not a huge convertible guy either, but because it's a convertible, I think it makes it that much better because it is just a fun car to drive. And I think that for car guys, that's the ultimate purpose of having a cool car is to have fun. I have a good story about this. This car. one? Yeah, I do. This car? This was actually my father's first muscle car that he collected. He's probably had it for about 12 years. This is a L78 car. It's a 396, 375 horse car. It's a four speed car. I was probably 10 or 11. And my dad took the, uh, one of our tow trucks out to Flint, Michigan. And he went to talk to an old General, Mo General Motors higher up who owned this car. And he went out there. He almost didn't buy it because of some outlying factors, but it was it's a numbers matching car with all the paperwork. And what's cool about this car, this car was actually from a local dealership like 10 minutes from here. That was where it was originally sold. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was sold at Reedman, which is maybe 10 minutes away from here, it's still in business. And it's an awesome, awesome, it's just an awesome story. I was surrounded about that all the time. You had to drive nine hours to go get a car that you could have got 10 minutes away. Yeah, I have a little soft spot for Novas. I love oh, yeah. the Novas. It gives you all the information of it. It's an NCRS car. It has been documented, documented and certified Big Jerry Beach, and he's like the godfather of everything Chevy. He mm -hmm. is really the person you go to when you want to find out if a car is like the real deal. It won the Spinner's Concourse Award, which is one of the biggest awards in the country when it comes to Chevys, and it won the Diamond Award. Yeah, and it's also an L78, which makes it even more rare. Not a lot of them were made in Dover white, which is this color's car. And yeah, we've got the Judge right here. Yeah, I think it's definitely one of the more recognizable yeah. Muscle cars out of there. I mean, what do you think, JD? Oh yeah, <laughs> dude, I just love them all, man. Yeah, I'm I definitely not biased when it comes to like the older cars. Look at that; they even collect bicycles. It baffles me how much these things go for. Like, I've seen these bikes go for thousands of dollars. So we are walking in the back into the shop. So let's check out the shop. We have a full service shop. We employ nine technicians. These are actually two cars that we're going to be posting up for sale, the 70 TA Challenger and the 383 Cuda. Both of them are numbers matching cars. We work on anything from newer muscle and newer sports cars like this Corvette, uh, down to the muscle cars. We do German cars, SUVs, trucks. King on two Broncos right now, ironically. This guy is building an awesome, awesome build with this one. And like I said, we work on import cars, Japanese cars. I like this. I'll admit that I'm not a fan of the wheels, but we, I like the I like the car. <laughs> we actually bought this car something to fix up. Yeah, you know, it has a lot of potential. It's a '69 Chevelle. We put the motor together, put it in there. It's a work in progress, but it's definitely making some progress. For lack of yeah, better. you guys gotta see this. This is sick. I love this. See, the gentleman who owns this truck actually has a bunch of different toys. He actually owns an orange version of it, almost identical to this. This thing's got a lot of custom work done. He has a really really good taste for cars. <laughs> it's funny actually. Something just popped into my head as I hide my horrible hat hair. There's something, one more thing I do want to show you. One more thing. It's a little bit different than normal, but I think you might like it. What could that be? So if we want to take a ride over to a location where we keep a lot of the cars that we put up for sale, I would love to take you over there now. All right, let's go do that. I'm kind of excited. So this is yours. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I like the wheels, man. I don't think this is what Sung Kang had in mind when he said, what am I gonna let you drive a Hyundai? I think he wasn't thinking of this. <laughs> so this is your daily? Yeah, this is my daily driver. It's been sitting lately because I can't figure out if I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do next, whether I'm gonna do some additional aftermarket performance stuff, or I'm gonna go sell the car to a really close friend of mine and maybe get something a little bit more appropriate for a daily driver like a truck, or something else less appropriate as a daily driver like, and there's endless possibilities for that. I see you got Sparco seats in there. I have two R100s for the passenger and driver's side. It's lowered an inch and a half. It's got Cook's headers and a Magnaflow header back exhaust. It's uh, Hotchkiss performance wheels. My favorite part of the car is actually right here. I'm a huge Paul Walker fan, huge fan of the movies. 
and I really identified with what he did. He's the best example we have of somebody who came in on a mainstream platform like movies and film and changed a lifestyle like the car lifestyle and, the car, and being a car guy for the better. Yeah. And it, it was that he was definitely a role model and somebody you could look up to. And you guys would all have to agree with that. I agree with it. Sorry, car guy ADD, I heard an exhaust. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all have that. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I don't think that's a bad thing either. No, so why not don't at you all. Follow me over there and uh hopefully you like what we have to offer. Yeah. Why are you <laughs> Because it's not. Laura's like, what car is that? Is that a prelude or something? Don't make fun of me. What is it? I don't know what it is. Diddy. I think it's a Hyundai. I don't know which Hyundai it is. Whatever. What is it? Hyundai. Yeah. What is that strap for? Okay, so Rob is sending me around back. He's not letting me go in the front door. So, yeah, super secret. So what, what's going on here, man? Okay, so like I said, we're at where I was telling you where the warehouse is. And just because I think he's really going to enjoy this part, and by me saying I think, I mean he's really going to enjoy this part, I need to get his reaction because I think it's going to be priceless. So I'm going to send him around back, and I'm going to open the garage door, and we're going to see what happens from there. Okay. Got a text back, he said it's two minutes, but this is the door that he said to me. I, uh, I told you, I mean, I thought maybe you would like it a little. Yeah, that's my, that was my response. Is that what I think it is? Um, what do you think it is? Paul Walker's car. Well, to be specific, it is the one of the four actual screen used Mitsubishi Evolution 7s that was used in the production of Too Fast, Too Furious. Sorry, Paul Walker, Tyree Gibson, Ludacris, Chris and a few other notable actresses and actors like Eva Mendes. Yeah, so pretty much it is exactly what you think it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been playing this for six months, and th it was leading up to this moment when I wanted to see this. This is priceless for me. Maybe it should be open. Keep my battery off. Oh, by the way, Ender is really underground. Yeah, I'm gonna take this thing out. I mean, I'm already here. I think that's a good deal. I think it's, I think it's fair. So, guys, I'm sorry I'm going to have to do this to you, and this is going to be a whole other video. Craig Lieberman put this car together, and I actually have linked up with Craig, and I've talked to him about the car, and I've talked to him about the other movies, and he's actually a really, really awesome dude, Craig Lieberman. So, another car in here just caught my eye. You guys got to check this out. It is beautiful. Fox spot. It's almost too much for the street. A lot of the stuff in here, just to be clear, is stuff we're selling for our dealership. We can't keep everything in, in one place. This car is really, really badass. This Fox body probably has over $45,000, $50,000 invested in it. No expense was spared. Full suspension was done. Street slicks. And my favorite part, if you want to take a look over here, baby, Mishimoto Rad, full build motor. Even with the heads, with being the Patriot heads are chrome, there was no expense spared with this bad boy. This thing is ridiculous. I know, I think it would look really good next to your GT500, but we can talk about that off camera. What, what's the price on this car? Realistically? Because I know maybe one of my viewers might be interested in this. That would be awesome. With it having to probably be about $45,000 worth of work done, you can buy this car and have it at your door for like seventeen nine. That's not bad. I know guys that have bought Fox bodies and spent, you know, like maybe three grand for the car and have dropped another 20 grand into it. I mean, it's already done. Real, but what I'm saying so. is like, and that's a very valid point because I have tons of those stories as well. Mm -hmm. But regardless of a car, whether you're a Ford guy, Chevy guy, Dodge guy, Chrysler, Plymouth, just name some older right. stuff. Even if you're newer, like how you used to have an Evo, or like I said, Mitsubishi, Super, you couldn't make a full-blown done car for that price. For that price, it's no. not feasibly possible. No, not at all. Not at all. But the thing is ridiculous. It's definitely a gorgeous car, and it's got the Weld RTS wheels. Logan, is this one your favorite? 
Is it? What is it? So little man thinks it's Mater because it is a tow truck, but it's close enough. You want to sit inside Mater? No. no. Look what's inside Mater. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. There is a dummy in there. Dummy's got a carpool lane, man. You can't get pulled over without that guy in there. You don't know about that. I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to sit in there either with that dummy in there. There it is. I'm going to wrap up this video. Hit that like button. Subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video with that car. Should be fun. Peace.